which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affection on things above not on things on the earth amen our thought for this morning the view from eternity. The view from eternity. Let us pray. At verse number one, it said, If ye then be risen with Christ, if ye then be risen with Christ, this term 
risen with Christ is a reference to the fact that those who belong to Christ have first entered into his death. The old man, the old you, the old life being dead through repentance. Before we can move on to anything else, first there must be the death of the old man. First the soul must come to repentance. The Greek word for repentance is metanoia. Metanoia literally means beyond the mind, above the mind, beyond the mind, and by implication, the transformation of the mind, which is to say, in order for a person to ever follow Christ, we will have to go beyond our former self. You will have to go beyond your old way of thinking, the way that this world has trained us to look at the world, the, the way that the world has trained us to perceive our interactions, our relationships, our lives. If we're ever going to be born into the kingdom above, we will have to make it up in our mind that I must go beyond my old ways. You can't live in a new kingdom with an old mindset. Or let me say it in a more familiar way. You can't put new wine into old wine skins. That old stuff won't do nothing but break down and make you have a mental breakdown. The reason why the church doesn't look like the church to some of us. Sometimes we sit around and talk about how it used to be. Amen. Maybe I was just coming up on the end of how it used to be. Amen. But I remember, amen, from when I was a child, is, is the church is different now than it was back then. I don't just mean the temple, I mean the church worldwide. It's a, it's a, it looks different now. Why? Why is that? It's because so many of those who are in it, so many who are calling themselves Christians, amen, have a carnal mindset. Carnal meaning of the old nature, of the old fleshly man, of the old lifestyle. It's because we now have it in our mind thinking that we can take the world into the kingdom. But Christ never called us to take the world into the kingdom. He called us to take the kingdom into the world. The world is not supposed to transform the kingdom. The kingdom is called to transform the world. So first we must have the old man die. Now death, according to the Bible, means separation. As the body without the spirit is dead. So your body dies when your spirit is separated from it. Death is separation. So I must be separated from that old way of thinking. It's a form of death. Just as Jesus was put to death on the cross and buried, we also have to bury the old self in the watery grave of baptism. This is one of the major points of water baptism. It is, it is several things all wrapped up in one. For you see, it is at once a symbol, but also a spiritual working. On the side of it being a symbol, it is a declaration that I have come to that place where I've declared the death of the old me. And now I'm going to bury him in the watery grave, the like symbol of Jesus being put inside of the earth. And of course, the spiritual working of it is that when any man goes down into the water with faith in his heart, that is where the blood of Jesus Christ will meet you and wash your soul and make you clean as if you'd never sinned a day in your life. So the old man must be put to death. Now, I cannot put your old man to death. It must be your own decision. Your own eternal salvation will depend 
on your own decision. The preacher can't save you. The church can't save you. The saint on the pew with you can't save you. If you won't choose Jesus, even Jesus can't do it. Oh my goodness, did he say that? Yes, he did. Jesus died to provide salvation for the whole world. But each individual soul has to take advantage of what Jesus has provided. You have to make your own mind up that the old man will be dead so I can live a new life. Then you must follow the instruction of Jesus and submit to water baptism. It's amazing to me that there are some folk who think that you can make it without submitting to water baptism. But salvation means, according to Matthew 1 and 21, that Jesus came to save his people from their sins. Sin is a violation of God's commandment. Jesus is God and Jesus commanded that we be water baptized. So tell me how it is you think that you are saved from your disobedience while you're walking in your disobedience. The devil has fooled somebody. Let God be true in every man alive. The old man has got to die. That old rebellious mindset has got to die. That, that old thinking that I can have it my way. This is not Burger King. This is the kingdom of heaven. You cannot have it your way. You will have it his way or you will have it no way at all. The old man's got to die. We've got to bury him. Just as Jesus rose from the dead to a new and everlasting life on the third day, so we have risen in the Spirit of God to a new and everlasting life. I said we rise in the Spirit of God. That is when the Spirit of God rises in us. Uh, I remember the day, uh, the very hour, uh -huh, when God filled my soul with the Holy Ghost power. Uh-huh. I felt the spirit moving uh, on the inside. Uh, I felt it moving up from my belly <laughs> because out of my belly was about to flow rivers of living water. Uh, and then I felt it moving up into my mouth. Uh -huh. I had stammering lips and another tongue. Uh -huh. And when I opened up my mouth to cooperate with God uh, and to allow him to do what he was doing in me, uh, then out of my mouth came words that I did not understand uh, as I began to speak in other tongues, uh, just like in the Bible. Uh, I want to tell you, you got to have the full Bible stand standard of salvation. Now, don't take anything less than what Peter had. Don't take anything less than what James had. And don't let any preacher tell you you can make it with less. Somebody always saying, preacher, you don't take all that. But the answer is it takes all of that and more. Because not only do you got to get saved, but after you get in here, you got to live saved. You got to be saved. You got to walk saved. You got to talk, save. The remainder of that song said, I looked at my hands, and my hands looked new. I looked at my feet, and they did too. You got to come into a new life. You got to come into a new mindset. You got to come into a new way. If you're going to have a place in a new kingdom with God forever, if you believe that, you ought to put your hands together and say yes. The Bible went on to say, if ye then be riven with Christ, seek those things which are above. If you are the saved, if you are those who have repented of your sins and put the old you to death, if you are one of those who has buried the old you in the watery grave of baptism, and if you are one of those who have been filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God has given utterance, uh, then you have risen with Christ in the newness of life, uh, then what you are supposed to do from this point forward is to seek those things which are above. Look at your neighbor and ask them this question. What are you seeking? 
What are you seeking? Uh, what is your life focused in? Uh, what are you dreaming about every night? What, what is the main part of your conversation? What you talking about all the time? You send all these text messages and inboxes. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you focused on? Uh, where is your life heading? Because wherever you fix your eyes, that's where you're going to end up going. I want you to understand. So if you've gotten saved, but you spend all your time looking back where you came from, if you spend all your time reminiscing on how you used to be before you got saved, before you know it, uh, you'll find yourself sliding back uh, to that old life you used to be in. But uh, if you keep your eyes focused ahead, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on Jesus, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on the prize, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on righteousness, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on faith, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on power, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on healing, uh, if you keep your eyes locked on giving God glory, uh, then that's where you will find your life at. Uh, and you will find yourself growing in grace. Uh, you will find yourself going from faith to faith, uh, from grace to grace, uh, from glory to glory. Uh, somebody ought to say yes. What are you seeking? What are you looking for? Houses, cars, clothes, money. Fame, swag, notoriety. You trying to be Vine famous, <laughs> trying to be a YouTube star, <laughs> trying to be a hood star, trying to be a trap star. What are you focused on? How could you possibly think that you could glorify God while you're trying to glorify yourself? Well, we need to rethink it. We need to reconfigure our mindsets. What are you seeking after? Came to tell you today to focus on the things of the heavenly kingdom. God has made you so that you would live a life that is focused in the things of the heavenly kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 through 21. That's Matthew 6, 19 through 21. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven uh, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. <laughs> for where your treasure is, uh, there your heart will be also. Uh -huh. Jesus is talking to us about our treasure. Uh -huh. Treasure is that in which you place value. Uh, we are called to place value in the things of God. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, uh, self-control. <laughs> we ought to place value on the things that God places value in. <laughs> we shouldn't be placing all of our value on a, a Michael Kors bag, a pair of Stacey Adams shoes. <laughs> value does not belong to a Mercedes Benz <laughs> or a house in Sycamore Hill. <laughs> I thank God for some nice stuff, <laughs> but if I don't never have none of that stuff, I got to have Jesus. <laughs> if I don't have none of that stuff I got to have righteousness if I don't have none of that stuff I got to have peace if I don't have none of that stuff I got to have joy down on the inside if I don't have none of that stuff I got to have the favor of God I got to know Jesus I got to know the savior of my soul I got to be close to him I got to know his voice I have to understand his ways there's nothing more important in your life huh, than to make sure that you know Jesus. Huh? If you know that's right, somebody ought to clap your hands and say, you right. Uh-huh. I know I'm right. I'm in the book. It went on to say, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. 
set your affection, set your heart, set your attention, set your eyes on the things of the kingdom above. Let your focus be determined by that which glorifies God. Uh, every morning when you get up and go to work, don't just go to work thinking about I'm just going to work and go home. <laughs> but we got to go to work thinking about what can I do to glorify God <laughs> in the next eight hours, the next 10 hours, the next 12 hours, however long you're going to be there. What can I do to be a servant of the Most High even while I'm on my job, even while I'm in the office, even while I'm on this assembly line, even... <laughs> While I, wherever you are at, uh, even while I'm in the store, even uh, while I'm working from my desk at home, what can I do to glorify my God and Savior, Jesus Christ? Uh, how can I have better interactions with people uh, so that I can represent my Lord more correctly? Uh, I want the whole world to know that Jesus is my Savior. Uh, I didn't come here to hide my Jesus. Uh, I didn't come here to put my light under a basket, uh, but I came here to let you know huh, this little light of mine huh, I'm gonna let it shine huh, everywhere I go huh, I'm gonna let it shine huh, all in my home huh, I'm gonna let it shine huh, let it shine huh, let it shine huh, let it shine huh. I came here to make Jesus famous huh, if you want to magnify his name huh, somebody shout out glory I can't afford to live according to what I see in the here and now. <laughs> I can't afford to live according to uh, what the tax man said. I can't afford to live according to what the bank man said. I, I can't afford to live according to what Pookie and Ray Ray and them said. Uh, but I got to live by the view from eternity. Uh, I can't let my fears get me down. Uh, I can't let the anxiety get me down. Uh, I've got to live by the view from eternity. Uh, or I can't let what it looks like stop me from moving on in God. Because uh, I I've come to another perspective. Huh? I'm looking down on life from God's side. Because huh? the Bible said that I am seated with Christ huh? in the heavenly places. Huh? So you might be looking at it from the earthly view. Huh? And that's why you have a limited mindset. Huh? But I see infinite possibility. Because huh? I'm seated with Christ. Huh? And I've got the view from eternity. Huh? I don't care what it looks like. Huh? I don't care what they said it is. Huh? Let Goliath get up with his bad self. Huh? I'm not afraid of what I'm looking at. Huh? For we walk by faith huh? and not by sight. Huh? I don't care what you said it is. Huh? I don't care what they said on CNN. Huh? Let ISIS do whatever they want to do. Huh? Let the government do what they want to do. Huh? Let the job fire if they want to. Huh? Cause baby, I'm gonna make it. Huh? I've already made it. Huh? And I'm just walking out with God put in my spirit. Huh? I've got victory huh? over the enemy. Huh? And the world huh? can't do me. Huh? No harm. Huh? I've got the view from eternity. Huh? Somebody say yes. The view of my bank statement can't dictate my next move. I'm living by the view from eternity. The view of my doctor's report can't determine my ability to be healed. I'm living by the view from eternity. The view of my past sins can't detour my salvation. I'm living by the view from eternity. I won't let my destiny be derailed by my own limited human thinking, by my own feelings, by my own opinions, by my own visions. From this moment forward, I'm living by the view from eternity. God saw the end from the beginning. He ran back down to the beginning and kick-started the end. And since I already know I win, cause I read the end of the book, y'all. The end of the book says we win. The end of the book says we're gathered before the throne. The end of the book says we receive a white robe. And the white robe is the righteous deeds of the saints. 
the end of the book says we eat from the tree of life huh? and the healing of the trees huh? or rather the leaves of the trees huh? is for the healing of the nations huh? I read the end of the book huh? it said we were hungry no more huh? neither would we thirst anymore huh? neither would the sun strike us huh? I read the end of the book huh? I've got a view from eternity huh? so I'm going to walk huh, in the power of God huh? I'm going to fight the enemy huh? in the power of God huh? I'm going to have victory huh? in the power of God huh? I don't have to be shaken huh, by anything that the devil does huh? i got a new view huh? I've got a view from eternity huh? I've got a new perspective huh? I'm up above my problems huh? I'm up above the world huh? I'm on something different now huh? If you want to come on with me, huh, you can have that same view, huh, that view from eternity. Huh. Won't you come on? Huh, take a hold of the Lord. Huh. Let him do it in your life. Huh. Let the old man be dead. Huh. Let the old mindset be dead. Huh. I got better things. Huh. I got bigger things. Huh. I got super things. Huh. Somebody say yes. I got a new mindset. I got a new outlook. I got a new lease on life. Yeah, I decided I got to think like Jesus. I got to walk like Jesus. I got to live like Jesus. Somebody say yes. Even Christ didn't desire to suffer and die. Sometimes I don't want to go through the things I'm facing. Even Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh-huh. He said, if there's any other way, uh, let this cup pass from me. Uh-huh. But then he said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. He didn't want to suffer and die. But for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and it sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And now because I'm in him, that means I'm seated with him at the right hand of the power on high. Since I'm already there, I don't have to worry about if I'm gonna make it. All I gotta do is walk it out. Put one foot in front of the other. Look at your neighbor and say, walk it out. Walk it out. You got victory. Yes, you don't have to cry no more. You don't have to worry no more. You don't have to be depressed no more. Baby, you can't see it now, but you already made it. And that is a reason to praise the Lord. You were sick, but you already healed. And that's just another reason to praise the Lord. You thought you was defeated but you found victory in Jesus. And that's one more reason to praise the Lord. I'm not depressed because I don't have an earthly view. I'm not angry because I don't have a carnal view. But I got the joy of the Lord down in my soul. Down in my soul. Because I've got the view from eternity. If you can see your life, the way Jesus sees your life. Why don't you put your hand together and give him a praise. Uh-huh. Yes. God's been too good to us. See, what I'm trying to get you to understand, maybe some of y'all didn't catch this yet, is that you, yes, 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 you, you are in a fight, but baby, the fight is fixed. Uh-huh. The enemy is already defeated. You already got the championship belt. So what you're sitting there looking sad for, you ought to praise him. You ought to magnify him. You ought to lift him up. You ought to give him glory. Uh 
Uh-huh. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I got a few folk that really grabbed it. Uh-huh. I'm trying to wait for the rest of y'all to catch up with us. Uh-huh. See, somebody here understands, don't matter how bad it feels right now, the view from eternity says, I am the winner. I am the victor. Oh, I might have to suffer some losses here, but I know in the end I'm going to win. So don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. <laughs> 